welcome to this Amazon Lumberyard tutorial video. In this video we're going to get textures for um, Examo or Adapt Views character working in Amazon Lumberyard. So we get the, the correct effects for the metal and hair. Um, just tip with Fuse um, to open it faster you can go to where the exe file is located then do file open windows powershell as admin And then you can just do dot backward slash fuse dot exe and run that a few times and you should see it open. It's a lot faster than spam spamming the shortcut. Now I'm just opening this so you can see the effect that we want to achieve with our character. While we wait for that to load. Um, and a thing to point out is that the textures that are exported from the Mixama website and from Adapt Fuse are slightly different. So when you do export with Bling, Fong, Specular Gloss thingy in Adapt Fuse, you'll notice that there's no opacity map because that's already been applied, and there's this ambient occlusion which you can just delete. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I'll use the ones from Mixama just to show you how to apply that opacity map. So you can see this is the effect we want to achieve for metal, this nice shiny thing. And for hair we want to get these strands to appear. Sadly I haven't been able to get the discoloration in the hair to actually work. Um, I think that's the problem with how it's exported. Like instead of exporting the changes you've made to the texture, it instead exports the default texture, which is not what we want. There is a slight problem with the eyes, which I might fix in a future video, but um, and we'll just leave that as it is. Now, I'm going to use GIMP as the software because uh, for, the software for editing the photos because it's free compared to Adobe Photoshop. So let's just start off opening GIMP. Now, important: don't open the images as layers; open them separately. So let's navigate to where we have them saved. Was it tut textures? So let's start off with the diffuse and opacity. Let's just open the diffuse texture and then open the opacity texture. And what we're essentially going to do is put the opacity texture into the into the alpha channel of the diffuse. So select the opacity, right click, add a layer mask, and have it be a grayscale copy. Make sure that's selected because it'll have a white border around it. Control A, Control C. And now the diffuse texture, we have to actually make some changes. So we're going to set the zoom to 50%, then use the zoom tool and zoom in once just to get 66.7% zoom. Now we're going to go over here, and these are the metal objects. Now, what we want to do here is use the scissor tool to select them. So we'll start off with the circle, we'll just do it at quarter areas, and it more or less selects it, so it's good enough for now. And I'm just click in the middle to have that selected. Now we'll move on to this one, so let's just do it in the corners. and then hold shift while clicking in the middle just to add that so they're both selected now corners for this one as well so now that we have all those selected we want to select the doge slash burn tool switch to burn set the exposure to 100 select shadows and set the size to like 2000 and just click and move it around a bit and this will set the it'll, it'll make the shadows darker now we want to do the same for midtones and then we want to do the same for highlights and i think one more round should do it
and we can check the color of like these middle thing just see what the 51 I found that um, depending what kind of effect you want you might want it to be brighter or lighter so I might just control Z the last change and see what that's it now instead oh, oops. okay never mind that's not really helping ah 77 um, yeah I think this looks fine Although, we might want to just bring this exposure down a bit and bring down the midtones. Just that there's less, there's less difference between the shadows and midtones. Oh, that's a bit... Mm -hmm. We'll leave it as that for now. Just do... So now, come back here. Oh, select a none, switch to this one, make sure the mask is selected, Control A, Control C, move over here, right click, add layer mask, have it be white, make sure it's selected with that white border, Control A, Control V, and anchor, and this will essentially add that to our alpha channel, and then we want to do file, export as, and this is an important bit, you want to have it be underscore diff 2f's dot tiff with 1f and export that and then want to make sure that you tick save color values for transparent pixels and export now that's done we can close that and close this now let's open up the normal map, and because we're going to put the gloss map into the alpha channel of the normal map. Let's also open up gloss. Now the problem with the eyes is that right here they have maximum glossiness, which means that from afar they'll be extremely shiny, but when you look a bit close, when you move the camera a bit close to the character in Amazon Lumbiard, you'll actually be able to see the eyes a bit better. Um, I guess we could do some shading around there, although I don't really see many advantages for that. Especially since we'd have to get the exact circle. I'm not sure if it's going to work, which is why we won't do it in this video. I might do another video if I figure out how to do it properly. So yeah, just right click, add layer mask, grayscale copy, control A, control C come over here, add a layer mask, so it's white, make sure it's selected, Control A, Control V, anchor, file, export as, and here we want to do underscore ddna dot tiff, and this tells it that, this tells the asset processor, I mean the resource compiler, that there's, that there's, um, that there's a gloss map in the half channel. So save color values, export, close this, and now we just want to open up the specular map. And here we're essentially going to do the opposite of what we did with the diffuse, and we're instead going to make this bits, these bits lighter, because as someone in the Amazon forums explained, um, it can be diffusely lit, or I mean diffusely reflected, or specularly reflected, and we want to have it specularly reflected, not both. So we want this one to be lighter. So now if we do that, same thing with selection. So now we want to go to the burn slash doge tool, and switch it to doge. It's exposure to 100. And we're essentially going to do what we did, but make it brighter now. It's okay if, like, for these bits, it doesn't really matter. If some bits aren't shiny, it might look more realistic. Because if it's worn down, I don't know. And then here we want to get it pretty light, but we still want that to... Ooh, no, not that light. Control-Z. 
yeah, draws it twice. I notice there's a bit of an offset there. See, so I might just control Z that again. Again, that offset might actually make it look more realistic, so control Z. I think it's probably the best that we're gonna get, although just add a bit there quickly to make it a bit more even. A bit there. Yeah, that looks fine. So export as and here underscore spec dot tiff export um yeah that's fine obviously if you wanted to make sure all of it was selected you might want to have edited that just to select those bits too now that we have these selected we want to copy them Ooh, not all of those though, just the TIFF files. Which we'll see. Right, let's go over to our project gem assets. I assume you've already imported your character. Now in textures, we'll paste those in. And we just want to make sure that the resource compiler is seeing everything correctly. So if you installed it with the installer from the Amazon Lumbyard website, you can right click and choose RC Open Image. If you didn't and did it from GitHub, then you'll have to go to your Lumbyard install. I believe it's in here, then oh, RC. I, I must have missed that. Scroll down. RC, oh, XC. Now, what we want to do is we want to send to desktop, which creates a shortcut on the desktop. Just cancel that. And we want to right click properties and edit this so where it says target go all the way to the end and then have a space forward slash user dialog equals oh, equals one apply okay now so this is if you've downloaded it from github if you haven't right right click rc open image Now what we want to do is just drag and drop them onto the shortcut. And make sure that this says normals with smoothness. Let's just wait for it to load in. Make sure it says normals with smoothness and click OK. This will make a export thing. Do the same with this. And for the diffuse file, we want to make sure it does not say albedo with generic alpha. We want it to say albedo with opacity. So let's just wait for it to open. And then select albedo with opacity from the drop down. Click OK. And then we want to bring the specular in. And click no, because majority of our character is not reflective. Which is why most of the image start. We just want to do reflectance. Click OK. Now, optionally, you could um, drag and drop them or right click and do RC compile image, or with that, it's bottom left, it says generate output. And then you could delete the TIFF files but um, and the export files and just use the DDS images. Although I like having those being, I like having the TIFF files being compiled by the asset processor instead. So now that that's done, all we have to do is just open Lumberyard. Um, I'll be back when it opens. Now that Lumbiard has opened, we can go into our level where we had imported our character. Um, I have that one hour video on how to um, import characters and animations from Fuse. I might make like a shorter 20 minute version if in some point in the future, if I feel like it. So now we have this um, 
rather ugly looking character here. So if we if we press M just to open up the material editor. And just drag that across here. Now we want to select our material. We'll just let's, uh, let me just reset all these values just to see what you'll see when you first try and import the files. So over here, it's still processing them all, so it actually might take a while. Well, uh, this seems to be okay. There we go. If we just move this out the way a bit. Now you can see that the hair does not look very good, the eyes do not look very good, and neither does the belt buckle. Well, I mean the belt buckle looks okay. Now, if we come in over here, boom, and we leave the opacity at 100 and set the alpha test to 50, we should get, it looks okay, and we want to set the smoothness all the way up to max. Make sure that the emittance map gamma is set to 1, just to get some extra details out of the face. And set the surface type to metal, just in case that belt buckle doesn't get processed properly. Um, a thing to note is that if you wanted to get like the best looking hair, you could um, make a separate material and you make two FBX files, one for just the hair and one for the rest of the character and add the hair as an attachment. And for that material, you'd set the alpha test to zero and the opacity to 99. And you'll notice that the hair looks a lot better. But the problem with this is that the rest of like the face and stuff also becomes opaque, which is why you have to add it to a separate thing. Although that is more resource intensive, so we'll just leave it with this for now. Enter. Now that we've made those changes, let's save that. When you hover over this, as I explained while we were texturing, no, this, as I explained while we were texturing, the eyes in the in the diffuse are very bright white. There's literally nothing there. But, oh no, there, there, there is color here. I mean, in the specular, they're extremely bright, and if we just set the specular to be dark, so if we darkened that area, then um, you notice that the metal would not work anymore. But, let's wait for that to save. You'll notice that the eyes now work. Although, now they're not, like now the, now the white of the eye isn't actually white anymore. So I feel like you'd have to play around with that, but now yeah, the metal doesn't work. I feel like you just have to change a few things. I'll make a video on that later. Anyway, um, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something.